All right, so you're probably sitting there right now thinking, should I buy the Helix 7? Or maybe you did buy it and you wanna know the good and bad about it. Well, I got roughly seven years of experience using the Helixes. I started out with a Gen 1 Helix 5, just base model with, I believe it had maps, but otherwise didn't have down imaging or side imaging. And then I upgraded to a Helix 7 G2, but that had just basic side imaging. And then this year I've been fishing with the Helix 7 G4N MSI. So it's got the mega side imaging and it's the most up-to-date model. So let's go over the good, the bad, and then things I would recommend if you're gonna buy one. So first pro, it has a really good screen quality. Like for the size of the screen, I never have a problem where it's too bright out and I can't see the screen, which I fish on a lot of sunny days. Never have that problem, so that's good. The settings on all the modes are really easy to understand. It's not super complicated to navigate through the actual settings themselves. Now, in the screens, that is a little different, but as far as like the settings in the screens, it, they keep it really basic, and I like that. It's not a whole bunch of different options that you don't really know what they do. Now, the one thing that the Gen 4 has that the Gen 1 and Gen 2 didn't have is the three quick select buttons, which huge bonus when it comes to just being able to quick select a different screen, select a different screen, select a different screen. I don't have to sit there trying to navigate through a bunch of screens I don't want to see. I know the top one's my map, the middle one's side imaging, and then the bottom one is side imaging and map. It's really simple. I recommend also learning what one button each direction from a screen is. So that way, in theory, you have six pre-selected pre screens you can get to where you know you hit the bottom one plus view and you got your three views here. You hit bottom one and exit and you got your 2D and maps. You hit middle one and view and you just got a map. You hit middle one, exit, you got down imaging. Now, I think the thing Helixes are like most known for is that they are super crisp when it comes to their side imaging, especially with the mega imaging. It is just an insanely clear image. You can see rocks really well. Can't really see fish on the smaller screen. On the bigger ones, you can see fish really well as well. But on the smaller screen, the fish are a little bit tougher to see. But in terms of like rocks and grass and that kind of stuff, really easy to see that sort of stuff on the screen with the side imaging, which is mostly what I use it for anyways. Now the cons. Like I said earlier, the major con to this thing is that navigating between the screens does get a little cumbersome, especially if you have a lot of options. Me, I got rid of about half the options, maybe even three quarters, to be honest. I, all I really have is side imaging, down imaging, maps, and 2D. Those are the only options I have, and then I just have combinations of those screens because there's just so many different options you can have. So one big negative I have with the helixes is there's no good way to lock the cords on the backside. The cords are just kind of hanging there loosely and I haven't had it yet, but I can totally see you going across the lake, rough water, and one of those cords wiggles loose. Suddenly you don't have a transducer anymore and it gets really annoying. You have to shut the unit off, turn it back on because it goes into demo mode. So I don't like that feature about it. I wish there was some way. I know the Lowrance hook has like a little twist to it. So when you put it in, you twist it and then it locks in. Uh, I believe the bigger, like 10, 12 helixes actually got like a little clamp deal that clamps on all the cords to the unit. It would be just nice to have on these smaller ones because like I said, I don't want them to be pulling out easily. So something kind of specific to the seven and the five is not the ability to have mega 360 isn't a huge deal for me i don't have the 360 transducer but you have to like upgrade your screen size if you do buy a 7 in order to ever use 360 which i wish there was a way to actually do it on the 7 i feel the screen's big enough especially if you had it up in the front of the boat it but yeah you just you can't it doesn't have the mega si plus or at mega down imaging plus and the plus is what you need to do the mega 360 so just know that if you're looking to buy one as well is that's something you're not gonna be able to do 
I touched on it a little bit earlier, but you're not able to see individual fish really well on the side imaging. It's not a wide enough screen to really see a whole lot of fish. They're right under the boat. You can, like, here, there's a little school of fish of some kind under the boat. I can see those, but anything off to the sides, can't really see. So that's kind of a negative. Wish it wasn't like that, but just what happens when you spend $1,000 instead of fifteen to $1,600. Now, as someone who has had these units for a long time, some things I would recommend to somebody looking to buy one. First off, get yourself a ram mount of any kind. Well, any kind of mount really. It doesn't have to be ram. Ram I really like. It's this one I've had for probably five, six years now, and it's worked really well for me. But get yourself a mounting system where you can move the actual unit around and adjust it because there's a good chance someday you're gonna have it set up where the sun's gonna be glaring on it and you wanna move it just that little bit. If you got a normal, just the mount mounted to your boat, you're not gonna be able to do that. So get a ram, ram mount, it's really nice. It's also nice if you wanna move around in the boat, like I fish up in the front a lot and I'll actually take the unit, spin it so I can see it up in the front really well and actually get a good look at the map and then the uh, side imaging as well because I'll be fishing weed lines and I want to see where the weeds are and that brings us into the second point if you are going to buy one of these get yourself a networking one even if you only are going to be using one unit pay the extra like hundred dollars and get a networking one so that way in the future if you ever buy another one you can also get another networking one that'll just save you in the long run for me back when I got the gen 2 I never got the networking capabilities in it which didn't seem like a big deal at the time because I really only had the one unit. But looking back at it now, I can't, if I make a waypoint with my side imaging at the console, I can't pull that up when I get up to the front of the boat. Hence why I rotate the unit around at the console so that way I can see my maps up in the front. And then just a little quick tip on the unit itself. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on anything, but what I will say is in your side imaging settings, I know it's nobody really tells you like the right settings to have which i find really annoying is just go in and then make your sensitivity 10 contrast 12. on 90 percent of the lakes i fish that setting right there works perfectly fine to find rocks grass fish all that kind of jazz you don't need to go and try and mess with the settings too much i mean you can if you want but to me it works really well just to have those settings so if you guys got any more questions about the units let me know down in the comments i'll get back to you asap i got like no life i just go fishing and then i just sit around doing nothing for the most part so i can get back to you pretty darn quick let me know down in the comments like i said and yeah i'm gonna get off the water because the fish are not biting today it's a big cold front kind of windy out I tried to get protected from the wind over here but yeah not a great fishing day so I'm getting off the water. I'll see you guys next time in the next video. Peace.